Hello friends, thank you for taking a moment to check out this video. I hope that it is an encouragement to you. For those of you that are part of the One Church family, I know that this is exactly where you are in many cases. And for those of you that are tuning in, maybe on the Jumpstart podcast or on uh, YouTube or Facebook somewhere around the world, maybe this is where you're at too. Because at our church, we're stepping into some brand new seasons. Uh, We're speaking revival not only over our church, but over our city, over our county, over our state. And in doing so, it has required us to reevaluate some things, to make a lot of things better, to take something that was ordinary and make it extraordinary, and to ask God to do the supernatural in our presence and in our hearts and our souls. And so as we've begun to look at those things, I know some insecurities in my life have surfaced and maybe you're dealing with the same things. Because the hype of Sunday does not always translate into the grind of Monday. Because as we gather, for those of us at the Cadiz location here under this roof, uh, it's easy to get excited about God doing miraculous, extraordinary, supernatural things. And then we go back to our homes. We go back to our jobs. We go back to our schools and our routines and our daily grind on Monday. And what seems so exciting in the presence of God's people on Sunday just doesn't carry all that much weight on Monday. So how do we take those things and cause them to transfer? How do we project what God had said on Sunday into everything that we do throughout the week? Well, the Apostle Paul, among many other passages of Scripture, references just this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Here's what he says in verse 5. For what we proclaim is not ourselves. Because if we spent all this time talking about us, we would accomplish absolutely nothing. We are not all that great. But Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So at One Church, we are glorifying God through fulfilling the Great Commission. And then the next verse is one of the most powerful, at least one of the most convicting for me. He writes, But we have this treasure in jars of clay, in earthen vessels, to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. Well, how does that, how does that happen? How does God accomplish that? He goes on to say that we're afflicted but not crushed, perplexed, not driven to despair, persecuted, not forsaken, struck down, not destroyed. He says, Bad things, difficult things, struggles are going to happen, but you're not going to be destroyed by them. It's through those things that God is going to show His glory. It's through the struggles. It's through the situations. It's through the schedules and the routines that you face Monday through Saturday that God shows His glory, not just inside the walls of a church building, but through you as the church in whatever your context may be. My mind goes to the man by the name of Moses. We find him in Genesis and in Exodus, and we see that God asks him a strange question. Now, God knows everything, so when he asked Moses this question, it wasn't because God didn't know the answer. It's because he wanted Moses to see something extra. He wanted Moses to see something super. He said, Moses, what's in your hand? When Moses looked at what was in his hand, he just said, this is a rod. This is something that I use to accomplish my job to keep sheep. It's what I beat away the the wolves with. It's what I guard the sheep with. It's what I walk with. This is just an ordinary rod. It's just a plain and simple object that I use to accomplish my job. But as you watch, as you read the account of this man by the name of Moses, you find that Moses could throw that rod on the ground and it could turn into a snake. Moses could stretch out that rod over the water and the waters would part. Moses could strike a rock with that rod and water would come out. Something that was plain and simple could accomplish the extraordinary and do the supernatural. Now let me ask you a question. Waving a rod over some water, does that do anything special? Well, the answer is no. Now I couldn't find a rod, but I've got this drumstick and waving it over this room right now does absolutely nothing other than make me look a little bit ridiculous. I mean, I could take a rod with me everywhere I went. I wish that it works like that in Nashville traffic, but waving this rod does absolutely nothing. It's just something natural. It's just something ordinary. But when we do the ordinary, when we do the natural, it's God who does the super. It's God who does the extra. So many of you are asking, whether in your volunteer 
uh, opportunities at church or in your jobs or in your schools or maybe in your opportunities as a stay-at-home parent. How do I see God do the supernatural? It's when you do the natural super. It's when you do everything, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, to the glory of God, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, God steps in and he does the super. Because if the super came by way of your effort, then you would receive the glory. But the apostle Paul says, we don't proclaim anything that's of ourselves. We proclaim our Lord Jesus Christ. So when we encounter a difficult situation, when God pulls us outside of our comfort zones, those are the times that we ought to be glad the times that we ought to be excited and expectant because it's through those ordinary things that God does the extraordinary. It's through doing the natural things that God does the supernatural. So those of you who hold doors, do it to the best of your ability. Those of you that take care of kids on Sunday, please do that ordinary job extra. For those of you who serve on a stage, maybe a worship team or a communicator of some sort, for those of you that are life group leaders or uh, you work in a sound booth somewhere, I don't care what ordinary thing it is that you do, you don't have to worry about being extra. It's God who does the extra. You don't have to worry about trying to do the supernatural. Don't do the Holy Spirit's job. You won't be able to do it. But if you will do the natural, if you'll do the ordinary to the best of your ability, God honors the effort and he fills in the gaps. So I wanna challenge those of you that are a part of our One Church family. As we gather for house party this Sunday morning, that's our time where our volunteers come together to pray and to worship and to get in our places to welcome our guests to our worship experience. I wanna challenge you from holding doors to taking care of kids, to working a soundboard, to standing on a stage. Do that to the best of your ability with a smile on your face like it's the most important thing in the world. Because I wanna tell you something, it is. It is the most important thing of the world. No job, no system, nothing is more important than anything else. Things have different levels of exposure, but I'm here to tell you that while we might see some things as bigger, God's perspective when he looks down is everything is just the same. Whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. Take your ordinary, natural, everyday talent, skills, and abilities, whatever God has placed in your hand, and use it for God. Because as we find the children of Israel walking out of Egypt, it was no longer Moses' rod that you find in Scripture. The Bible records that it was now the rod of God. Whether it's your voice, your hand, your strength, your ability, your finances, or your time, it's not just yours anymore. It's God's time. It's God's ability. That belongs to Him. We do the natural super so that we can see God do the supernatural. We do the ordinary with as much extra energy as we can because it's God who fills in the gap and turns it into extraordinary. I love you. Thank you so much for checking out this video. And I cannot wait to see you this weekend. And for those of you that are tuning in from anywhere, please post in the comments or share this video if it's helpful to you. And we can't wait to see you next time.